The three vehicles of power highlight the powers that we have as individuals. This podcast is sponsored by the three vehicles of power. To pre-order your book, click the link in my description box that is linked. To pre-order your book, click the link in the description box below. Pre-order your copy of The Three Vehicles of Power and Bless Your Life. Kiana Devine. I vow to change my beliefs so that I then can change my life. I vow to change my beliefs then may change my life. I vow to change my beliefs so I then may change my life. I vow to change my beliefs so I then may change my life. Say it with me. I vow to change my beliefs so I then may change my life. I vow to change my beliefs so I then may change my life. There are some negative beliefs that we have in different areas of our lives that it is in our best interest to rid ourselves of. We have negative beliefs about money, negative beliefs about time, our health, and structure in our lives. These are the areas where we can mostly get caught up. And these are very valuable areas in our lives. So there's a simple solution for this. If there is a negative belief that is not benefiting you, you can abandon that belief slowly but surely, letting it go, allowing it to fade away a little bit at a time by replacing that belief and or, or, or if replacing that belief is too difficult, taking our attention off of that particular belief and focusing on another belief. For example, if you are a person who's very frugal and every time you go into a store, you're like, dag, the price of bread went up, dag, the price of milk went up, dag, I can't afford this, I'm on a strict budget and you're always talking about the food that you cannot afford. But either way, when you leave out of the grocery store, you're going to wind up with something. A belief that you can implement in spite of the belief of things being too high, is change your actions. Maybe perhaps you don't go into the grocery store anymore because the grocery store, every time you go in there, no matter how hard you try, you just keep continue talking about how terrible the experience is because they're taking all your money. Then you're walking around the grocery store beaming negative energy because we are energy. We are vibrational creatures. You're walking around the grocery store all disgruntled all stressed out, depressed uh, with your, your, your pouting, you don't have a positive energy. Going to the grocery store is never a positive experience for you. So, so what can you do to change that? For many, many years, this has been how you have done your grocery shopping. And for many, many years, you have omitted negative energy while doing your grocery shopping. It has not been a fun experience. So what type of things can you implement in your life in order to avoid that whole issue? Well, there's several things you can do. You can devote a specific budget to your grocery shopping. And if whatever you can get for that amount of money, that's whatever you can get for that amount of money. One thing that I found that works for me is eliminating the whole experience altogether. I now prefer to do my grocery shopping online. I'm able to look at the previous cart of what I had ordered last time and reorder it again because I'm pretty much uh, a set person. I need the same things on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. So if there's something that I still have, I'll take it out of the cart. And if there's something that I need, I know it's going to be in the cart because I order the same things over and over and over. So what I do, what I have done is eliminated the situation altogether. I go to my grocery store online, put whatever I need to put in the cart and check, click the checkout button. If I feel like I'm going to have negative energy with clicking the checkout button, what I'll do is I'll have the kids to check out and then I'll have them to tell me how much it was, what it came up to. So I avoided the situation altogether. Therefore, that month when it came down to grocery shopping, I did not omit any negative energy. Now, what I will do is practice this, practice this for six months, practice this for nine months and eventually... I will get accustomed and used to the idea of ordering my groceries online and accustomed and used to the prices that they're offered. And then I will get so set in the ways of driving up to the grocery store, having them just to put the stuff in my cart. I'll find the convenience in it and I'll be able to see more of the pros of the situation than the cons. The valuable question in this perspective is to ask yourself, how can I get myself away from the problem until I can handle the problem? 
How can I restructure my life so I don't have to deal with this problem until I am ready to deal with this problem, until I can mentally handle the issue that is before me? How can I set myself up to choose the path of least least resistance for me right now in my life? Least resistance means I need to feel good right now. Forget what you're talking about. I need to feel good right now. I need to do what's going to work out for me right now. I need it to be beneficial to me right now. I don't need to emit any negative energy. I don't need to be sad and disgruntled. I need to feel good about this right now. What can I do right now? Temporarily until I can put a permanent solution in play. The three vehicles of power highlight the powers that we have as individuals. This podcast is sponsored by the Three Vehicles of Power. To pre-order your book, click the link in my description box. Pre-order your copy of the Three Vehicles of Power and bless your life. Kiana Devine. Now, this is just a perspective. There are a hundred ways to skin a cat. So this situation can be handled so many different ways. It is all perspective in how we choose as individuals to handle these situations. But now with implementing this change in my life, I no longer have the belief that the groceries is too high, or maybe I do still have the belief that groceries is too high, but I'm not activating that belief. That belief is not a part of my monthly life because the simple fact is I don't have to deal with it. So I did not eliminate the belief. I just added on another belief, aka technique or strategy in order to relieve me from what it is that I've been feeling for years. See, when you've practiced something for years, the old folks say, I'm set in my ways. When you get set in your ways, it's definitely hard to teach an old dog new tricks. The old dogs are stubborn. They want to do things the same way, even if it's not working out for them. Even if it's not benefiting them, they still want to do it the same way. Well, what we can do is we can do the creep method. Creep in on different beliefs to not... mm, Delete the belief completely out of our head, but kind of sway our attention away from beliefs. Say it with me. I vow to sway my beliefs so that I can implement new ones. I vow to sway my beliefs so that I may implement new ones. I vow to sway my beliefs so that I may implement new ones. I vow to sway my beliefs so that I may implement new ones. After a while, after a year of doing this, it might be even sooner for you if you do grocery shopping every week. I'm a a monthly girl. Uh, But after a while of doing this, you will not even think about the cost of groceries anymore. And then when you don't think about it anymore, you can implement a new belief. Well, I believe by that time you would have grown, right? So after a while of doing this, I found that I don't really care about the price of the items that I'm getting anymore. I'm more or less focused on the quality because uh, last year I was in a situation, quote unquote, to where I had the budget, This year, my life has grown. I've become a totally different person. And now I'm more focused on the quality of the products that I'm getting versus the quantity of the products that I'm getting. So now I'm able to implement new beliefs. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It doesn't matter how much my groceries cost anymore. It matters. Am I getting the top notch ground beef when I do order ground beef? I mean, I want the top of the line. I want the 92, uh, 8%. That means I want it mostly organic Texas beef and very little to no fat at all. That means I want the top of the line of whatever I'm purchasing, the top of the line bread, uh, the top of the line creamer, the top of the line water if I'm going to order water. Whatever it is, I'm now in a place in my life because I've grown, I've done the work, I've put the work in to implement a new belief in my life. And now my new belief, it went from, Remember, it went from, oh my God, I hate coming to grocery shop because these prices are always going up. It went from that and it went Jumped all the way over to, I don't care how much the groceries cost. I just want to get quality. It took some time. It took, in the middle of that, it took me changing my perspective. Not necessarily changing my belief, but shifting my perspective, finding an alternative way that will relieve me of the negative energy temporarily. See, that temporary that temporary relief is very important when you are an old dog and you're trying to learn new tricks. So the new beliefs that we can implement in our lives as far as money are as follows. I have four of them. I have four new beliefs that we can implement in our lives as far as money. Now, I'm offering you these beliefs. You might not be there, but what is the temporary relief that you can offer yourself in the middle before you actually get here? What you implement in your life temporarily so that you can have a chance to get to this new belief. 
because the joy is in the journey. Let me hear you say it. Say the joy is in the journey. The joy is in the journey. So money beliefs. Number one, I will not work like a slave for money. I have multiple streams of income that I generate every month. I will not work like a slave for money. That is one. I will not work like a slave for money. Now, you might not be able to fully agree with that yet because you might be a single mom with two or three jobs, with four or five kids, and you're like, I'm working like a slave. You have to take on this belief and figure out what can you do temporarily in order to relieve yourself from some of the negative energy that you're feeling, that you're facing, in order to eventually create a new belief in your life. Okay, let's just go, let's just go ahead and get into it. Let's do the real talk. See, I too am a baby mama, okay? And I remember, my kids are older now, but I remember not putting my children's father on child support. For years, I didn't put him on child support. I said, I could do this by myself. If he doesn't want to participate, then he doesn't have to participate. They'll find out and they'll see what it is. But in the meanwhile, I was struggling. In the meanwhile, I had negative energy directed towards him and letting him off the hook from his responsibilities, but I was not let off the hook of the responsibilities that I had. So those times where I had to work three jobs just to make it, I probably would have only had to work two. But I put myself in a position because of my belief system that, forget him. He doesn't want to do what he has to do as a dad. I'm going to do what I'm the mama and the daddy. That belief system is a belief system that many women have. But is it the path of least resistance for you? If a man makes a baby, he has to pay for that baby. If a woman makes a baby, she has to not only pay for that baby, but play for that baby and feed that baby and shelter that baby and console that baby and support that baby and be there emotionally for that baby and teach that baby and guard that baby and protect that baby. Something is not adding up. It's not, it's not adding up for me. So therefore, <laughs> we have certain beliefs. That is just one minute example of the beliefs that we have as women that block our blessings. Okay? That is just one. I am not telling you to go put your baby daddy on child support. Maybe you have a baby daddy that you could talk to and like, hey, look, look, let's check this out. I'm going to need you to don't throw me about three, four hundred dollars a month to take care of these three kids. It's only a hundred dollars per kid. Write me a check. We'll be good. Maybe you have that certain type of situation going on. Or maybe you don't have that type of certain situation. You got to get the man in the middle. Whatever it is you got to do. I'm not telling you, I'm not advising you whatsoever to believe in the child support system, to bring anyone into your situation. I am saying, look at the situations, look at the belief systems that you have. Look at your belief patterns that you have and ask yourself, are these beliefs working out for me? Is this working out for me? What are all the streams of income that I can have? And what's stopping me from actually having those streams? What are all the streams of income that are accessible to me that I'm not aligning with because of my belief systems, because of my laziness, because of my lack of action, because of my lack of confidence, because of the belief systems that I have? Okay? So the number one money belief that we that I'm offering that we can align with is I will not work like a slave for my money. I will not work like a slave for my money. So this podcast was generated to offer you a different perspective, to add value to your life. And if, if it is doing so, please follow us on all of our social media outlets to support the real Kiana Divine. And in addition to that, I would like for you to take a break and pause this podcast. Pause this podcast and write down four money beliefs that you have that are not serving you? What are some negative financial beliefs that you continue to think over and over? It could be something like, oh my God, it's it's time to pay the rent again. Or, oh my God, it's time to pay the mortgage again. Or, God dang on it. Why is this electricity bill so high? Or, oh, I just need to switch phone companies because this is too much. Or it might be that, um, yeah, I make a lot of money, but I also spend a lot of money. What are four negative beliefs, financial beliefs that you possess? Okay, write that at the top of the page. And then reverse those at the bottom of the page. So instead of saying, daggone it, it's time to pay this rent again, you may say something like, I am so happy and I feel so blessed. That I am able to pay my rent every month. I look forward to paying my rent every month. Now remember that these beliefs that I teach, this system that I teach, the creep method, 
That is what this system is called, the creep method. It's basically you creeping up on your negative beliefs, temporary, temporarily relieving yourself from those beliefs via an action or a thought, and then adopting a new belief. So this is a three-step process, and it doesn't happen fast. But the first step is to claim your ish. Write down four financial negative beliefs that you have. They may be passed on from your ancestors, but they're now yours because you are living in the present. What you do is what's going to impact the next generation, which is your kids and your kids' kids, okay? Second thing I want you to do is reverse those beliefs. Write out a right, real nice reversal of, you know, of, uh, of reversing that belief, making it sound really good. Remember, you don't have to believe this right now because a belief is what? It is a practice thought. So by the time you get finished practicing this belief 1,157 times, you're going to start to feel it. And then you're going to creep up on that thing. You're going to add a temporary relief point action, perception, whatever it is for you until you get to the point to where that new belief is yours. So your homework right now for you to pause this recording and write down your four negative beliefs, reverse them, and let's proceed to do the creep method because these videos are only as good as you actually implementing them in your real life. This is not entertainment. This is teachertainment, okay? We are here to share it together in this community. I enjoy doing this podcast, but I want to see women shift their lives. Let's get back to the podcast. Number two, new belief that we can incorporate in our lives if we are there. Say it with me. If we are there, if we are not there, I'm suggesting a temporary relief for those things. So the second thing is I have multiple streams of income that I generate every month. I have multiple streams of income that I generate every month. Now, this is one that feels a little bit uncomfortable because we might have multiple streams of income that we generate every month, but those multiple streams of income we're working hard for. We got the two jobs and a half. We might be getting the child support on the side. We got a baby daddy who we're living with, so he he chips in on some, and we're getting food stamps. Hello. Okay, so that might be multiple streams of income, but it's not free-flowing, upright, self-serving sources of income, okay? Because for one, we're slaving for that money. That is what we have to understand. So number two, I have multiple streams of income that generate that I generate money from every month. It's one that might seem uncomfortable, but let me tell you, sis, you have to say this over and over and over to yourself. I have multiple streams of income that I generate money from every month. I have multiple streams of income that I generate money from every month. I have multiple streams of income that I generate money from every month. And then one day you're gonna wake up and say, now, where is this damn multiple streams of income that I generate money from every month? Let me Google. Okay? Eventually, this is what happens. This is the law of attraction. The law of attraction says, like energy attracts like energy. So whatever you welcome into your world, you're going to get more of. Where your attention goes, your energy flows. If your attention is going to the topic of multiple streams of income that generate you money every month, then eventually you're going to research some streams of income. You're going to talk to some people who you know that have streams of income. You're somehow going to attract an app that has streams of income or um, a, a YouTube video that can give you some information. Or you're going to simply Google it. You're going to take a class on it. Somehow, some way, you're going to attract more information about incorporating multiple streams of income into your world. And it's going to open you up. But in the meanwhile, it's going to be uncomfortable. So what's the procedure with this? Say it. Say it until it no longer becomes uncomfortable. When it stops being uncomfortable and you get inspired action, that means the belief is inspiring you. First of all, when a belief inspires you, that means it is to your benefit and not to your demise. So the belief is working for you. It's an asset. It's an asset at this point. It is inspiring you. Inspired action goes a long way. So that means you are aligned. So you are now inspired to do research on this particular thing. And you're going to write down the research and you're going to see which way, which way, what do you align with? What can you possibly do? So now you have another source of income generated for yourself. It might be, just as an example, not telling you to do this, but it might be that it's time for you to start a Poshmark store because you have all these kids with all these name brand clothes that you work hard for that they can't fit anymore and it's time for them to get new clothes. 
okay? So you might start a Poshmark store, collect all your clothes and your shoes that are in gently used condition and sell them. And then you see how lucrative that is and you develop that as an ongoing stream of income. And then bam, instantaneously, something that can be done today, you have implemented a structure to add an additional stream of income into your life that can generate you money every single month. Now that is just one perspective. That is just one way. That is just... Oh, something that easily came off the top of my dome. I'm not telling you to do that specifically. I'm telling you to figure out what you align with. So practice saying, I have multiple streams of income that I generate money from every month. Practice that. And temporarily start researching it when you feel the, when you feel like you're there. Because he who has an ear, let him hear. I can't tell you to go ahead and research this if you're not even ready for it. If you're not there, you're not there. If you're not, if you're not ready to hear what, I'm ha what I have to say, then you're not going to hear it. But that is a new belief system. And that belief system that I have multiple streams of income that, generates, that I generate money from every month is a positive new belief. This podcast was created to empower women to go to the next level. So what I want you to do is pause the podcast right now. And in the comment section box below, I want you to write out, to type out some income streams that you have been able to generate in your life very easily and you have been able to make money off of them. We are here to empower other women. So there's women that are listening to this podcast right now who have not been able to create multiple streams of income in their lives. And for us that have, it seems so easy, but for those people who haven't even thought about that, it is stressful, it is hard, it is overwhelming, it's difficult. Leave some links, leave some comments in the comment section below, some suggestions of what other women can do to start the passive income streams in their lives. Make the messages positive and powerful and each person leave a message and make sure it is detailed. We are here to uplift the community and let's get back to the podcast. The third new belief as far as money that we can perhaps consider, consider taking on would be, I invest a portion of my income every month. I invest a portion of my income every month. I invest a portion of my income every month. I invest a portion of my income every month. Does it give you some type of power? Do you feel powerful when you say, I, yeah, I'm an investor. I invest a portion of my income every month. I know it feels a little uncomfortable saying I invest. It seems like white folks do that, doesn't it? It seems like big people, millionaires and people who are in careers that went to college do that. Uh-uh. No, that's not true. The everyday person invests, okay? The everyday person uses uh, platforms such as public. They use platforms like Webull. They use all type of platform, even cash app. People are using all, and by the way, I will have these linked in the description box below for you in case you want to go ahead and use them. They will offer you free stocks and or money if you do sign up with any of them today using the link provided in the description box below. Okay. Yes, she is about her bag. Back to the podcast. There are many different individual platforms that you can use that allow you to not only purchase shares, that means one at a time. They do not make you purchase full indexes like back in the day. They do not even force you to purchase a whole share. There are companies that allow you to purchase fractional shares. This means that if you cannot afford the whole share, you can put however much money on it that you have at this time. And then you uh, continue adding money to it until you are able to afford the whole one. But in the meanwhile, you're still in that thing. You're still able to make money off of the portion of the share that you have. You know, depending on however much you invested in, how much, however much you invested and, you know, what you invested in. So this new belief is I invest a portion of my income every month. I invest a portion of my income every month. Every month I invest a portion of my income. Now this one, how can you temporarily, you may not be able to get there to say, okay, yes, I'm taking $25, $100, $200, $500 every month, and I'm throwing it into the market. You might not be there yet. But what can you do temporarily? You can practice this thought. And then when you get aligned to do the research on this, you take the proper steps to do the research on it, and you throw $5. See how that does. See how you feel with that. You throw $10. And you see how you do with that. And once you start to feel more comfortable, you can fully take on this belief the whole way. Okay? These new beliefs are going to offer you a whole new perspective. So far, 
so far. You have come so far by saying, I will not work like a slave for my money. You have standards now. I have multiple streams of income that I generate money from every month. Now you have sources of income. You know what I'm saying? That you don't have to work hard for. Mm -mm, no. I invest a portion of my income every month. Now you are an investor. These, Just these top three beliefs have changed your life dramatically. That is what beliefs do. That is what a belief is supposed to do. It is supposed to add value to your life. It is supposed to make you better. It's supposed to benefit you. It is supposed to be an asset. It is supposed to make you feel good. If it's not doing any of that, then it needs to go in the trash. I don't care how long you've been taking it. And what do we say? There are stages to this. You start saying these things first so you can get to the point to where you're uncomfortable. You generate a temporary solution for yourself. That could kind of put you in the middle. And then eventually you practice practice that long enough. Practice makes perfect. Practice that long enough. And then you will uh, adopt it fully as your new belief. Now, fourth, 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 last but not least. The new money belief. Very responsible with money. Oh, oh, that's a big one. How many people feel like they are responsible with money? I remember my grandmother used to tell me, oh, that money burning a hole in your pocket, ain't it? That money burning a hole in your pocket, ain't it? That means that one is eager to spend what they have. That is devilish action. That is devilish action. If you are eager to spend that in which you have, then you will never have anything. Let me say that again. If you are eager to spend that in which you possess or have, you will never have anything. If you are eager to spend that in which you possess, you will never have anything because the whole idea of it is, is that you invest the most that you possibly can so that in the future, it will take care of you. Hold, hold up. Let me say that again. When you get money in your hand, the object is to invest as much as you possibly can now and feel wealthy and rich in the meanwhile because you're investing it. You're a big dog in the market and things. In hopes that it will take care of and provide a nice life, a nice lifestyle for you in the future. Why do they say that? Why would I want to, you know, hold my money up now? I got a YOLO. Okay. What this is is when you're young, when you are in your 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 prime, you have a lot of energy. When as you get older, your energy depletes and it depreciates. So you don't want to work that hard. So while you're young, you stack the chips, you set up a great foundation for yourself, and when you're older, you get to enjoy it. That is the way that it goes. So the belief that we're implementing is, I am very responsible with money. Say it with me. I am very responsible with money. I am very responsible with money. I am very responsible with money. I know that that triggered something in you. Because even if you are very responsible with money, you made a money mistake a time or two, even this month. You said, why did I make that purchase? Why didn't I make that purchase? Why did not I buy into the market then? Why did I pull out of the market at that time? Why did I make some of the money mistakes that I did in this month? Let's say it again. Let's say it again because it has to make us uncomfortable. Because when we are uncomfortable, we get to change shit around. Which means that if something, you know, is tugging on me a little bit, I know that I have to do something about it in order to create different results in my life. And, if, and when I create different results in my life, that means my belief system has changed. I am your coach, Kiana Divine. I'm leaving you with the message that it is important for you to change your belief system in order to obtain a new paradigm, in order to obtain new structures in your life, in order to obtain new pillars in your life in which you want to go. And today we covered four different money beliefs and offered you four different money new money beliefs that you can implement in your life today that will encourage you to be a better person. We encourage you to stop working so hard. We encourage you to get the bag and create multiple streams of income for yourself. We encourage you to become an investor. And we also encourage you to see how you can be more responsible about money. I am your coach, Kiana Divine. Thank you guys for listening. I will link everything in the description box below for you. If you are looking for a manifestation coach that will take you to the top, go ahead and click on my website in the description box below because I am that one. I am that one who is going to implement strategies and structure in your life that is going to offer you a whole different life and different perspectives. And I'll see you or talk to you in the next podcast.